Statistics and Excel coin flip calculating the expected value using an even versus an uneven coin as well as using even versus uneven odds. Get ready and some coffee because if you want to get futuristic, you need statistics and Excel because statistics helps you know to, to predict the future. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. We've got first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. The example, practice, and blank tabs. Noting the example tab is in essence the answer key, what we will be constructing. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you could practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the place that we will be working, as you can see here, blank. We're going to construct this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tools as we do so. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, what we will be doing. We've got the classic coin flip scenario, a great starting point, because of course there's only two possible outcomes per flip, the heads or the tails. We're going to be adding another factor to what we might have seen in some of our prior courses or sections, that being the payout situation converting this to something that you might see in like a game of chance at like a carnival or in a casino, which some people really enjoy. Other people don't like so much because they don't like to envision themselves like in a casino and gambling and so on. Don't let it throw you off that we use these kind of scenarios with the games of chance, however, because what we're doing here is focusing more on probability itself that we will then apply more broadly uh, to statistics and it's easiest to look at probability scenarios when we distill it down to its essence which is what basically has been done by these games of chances that's why they're so useful to to look at once we get the concepts down then we can apply them to all kinds of things not just like a, a gambling uh, type of scenario or situation all right so that's the idea so what we're going to do we're going to set up the, the coin flip situation, heads or tails. We're going to set up the payout structure in different scenarios. How are we going to get paid? Imagine it is as a game. So we're betting on if it's going to be heads or tails. Noting we have a couple different things that could change in that scenario. One, is it an even coin? In which case we would expect a 50-50 outcome. Or is it an uneven coin? in which case there's some kind of weighting to the coin where it's going to show up more more times on a heads or a tails that's going to impact of course the outcome the other thing that's going to impact the outcome is the payout we could have straight a one-to-one -one payout or we could have a payout that's going to be like a two-to-one type of payout so that's the added factor that we haven't really been looking at in prior presentations we're going to add here you can see this scenario playing out almost exactly the same in like an investment type of situation uh, where you're trying to come up with a, a similar thing the difference between basically gambling and an investment situation is you're usually looking at a vest investments which might have favorable odds right whereas in a casino they're usually you're usually only looking at the unfavorable situations now we'll run different scenarios where we have multiple flips of the coin and then we'll be able to use excel to kind of test and try to say okay well how can i test my theory in excel using random generators uh and and then we'll see if if our expected value predictions come out to be what actually happens and we'll try to do that under our different uh, scenarios of an even coin and an uneven coin.
So that's going to be the general idea. It seems the coin flip seems like a very easy scenario, but it actually gets somewhat complex once you start to add in the payout and then you mess with the weights uh, of of the coins. And then we'll apply these same concepts to different problems, more complex problems with more than two results in future presentations. Now, if I go to the practice tab, we basically have all of the, the cells already formatted so you can then work through the practice problem and instead of formatting the cells as we go, you can just basically fill in the worksheets here and that'll be a little bit easier. But on the blank tab, we're gonna format everything as though we're starting just from a blank worksheet here. So blank worksheet, the first thing I'll typically do is zoom in. I'm at like a 220 on my screen here. I'm gonna select the entire worksheet with the triangle, right click on it and we're going to uh, format the cells. And then I'm going to format it. I usually go to currency, negative numbers, red. And then I'm going to say no dollar sign. I'm going to get rid of the decimals. We're going to need decimals sometimes, but I want to pick the times that we're going to use the decimals. So I'm going to say, okay, there we have it. Now I'm also going to go to the home tab, font group, and choose bold here so that it's emboldened because I think that's easier to see in our screencast, but you might not need to do that if you're not because you're not in a screencast situation all right we're going to start off with our with our coin flip coin flip situation now we're going to have heads which i'm going to represent with a one and tails with a two now this is obviously when we do a coin flip scenario we've got heads and tails it's useful for me to convert then the heads and tails to a numerical situation in essence for excel coding scenarios so I can run scenarios that don't come up with just a head an H or a T but will but will have a numerical value associated with them so that's just going to be useful in Excel I'm going to format up top we're going to go to the home tab font group I'll make this black and white that's my going to be black and white for my header I'll typically select this information home tab font group I'm going to put brackets around it and I like to make it blue for my data input. So drop down, if you don't have that blue, more colors, standard, and then I go to that blue right there, boom. And then there we have it. All right, so then I'm gonna make a skinny C. So I'm gonna grab the middle of this one so it looks like that, make it a skinny. So we have a skinny C, see, it's skinny. The C is skinny, see? And then I'll make it, let's make a skinny B too. Skinny B, not as skinny, but skinnier, just so you can just see the one and the two. All right, the next thing we're gonna need is our payout scenario. So the pay, the payout, let's say pay out. I probably should have put this underneath, but we'll put it over here. And I'm gonna make this black and white up top. Again, home tab, font group. Let's hit the drop down, making it black and white. And so what's going to be the payout? So I'll put it, I can, usually you'll see it this way. Pay out, O-U-T, is going to be one to one. So that's what we're going to start off with, even odds. So we're flipping a coin, and it's going to come out heads or tails. We're imagining it's a fair coin to start off with. And if you win, then you get a dollar, right? And if you lose, we're going to say, I'm going to represent it with a negative one. Now, sometimes you're not going to see a negative one. It'll just see, you'll just see like one to one is going to be the payout. So if you imagine it as a casino game or something like that, you probably would put your dollar there, right? And then if, when they flip the coin, if it comes out heads and you chose heads, then they're going to put another dollar on top of your dollar and you take it. But if it's tails, they're going to just take your dollar, right? That's going to be the idea. Now, you might want to state it this way. If, if there's a win, then you've got a one. And if there's a loss, it's going to be negative one. So your, your payout is a negative payout in the event of a loss, right? So I'm going to make this bracket, home tab, font group, brackets. And we're going to say to do it. Let's standard and make it blue. So there is that. All right, so once we have that, we can then think about the odds, right? We can say, okay, what are the odds that we're gonna have here? We can have a win, we can have a loss, and we can have the total. Now, as we think about this, 
notice that I have to think about one or the other. It's because I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm either going to bet on heads or tails. So let's imagine heads is the thing that we're betting on. So we're going to bet on heads and then, and that'll be the scenario that we win and tails is going to be the loss scenario. Okay. So let's make this a header again. I'll select this home tab font group, dropping it down, making it black make it white. I'm going to go into the alignment and center it. Okay. So the odds, uh, the odds to win, uh, versus I'm going to compare that to the total possibilities. So here's our ratio analysis. I'm going to, I made this larger. And so to win, we have a one out of two. Now, if it's a fair coin, then that's all we have to do is take is take however many chances we have in this case there's only two chances and we take if it take either one of them divided by the total chances for example if it was a dice and it was even odds we would take any number to get a four would be one out of the total options six if it was a deck of cards 52 cards we take one card out of the total deck 52. Now, if it's not even like the, the coin is weighted, that's going to throw up and we're going to have to do something different. But if it's even, then that's all we have to do. We could just say, okay, it's going to be the, the chances that we hit that are going to be one out of however many chances there are on a roulette wheel. It's like 30, what, 38 or something like that, which we'll talk about later. So what's the chances of losing? Losing is also one over two, one half, 50% chance win, 50% chance loss. So what does that do for the total? We have the sum of these two equals the sum of these two and then equals the sum of these two. Actually, sorry, not the sum. We're adding them. <laughs> so it's it, so we add two over two. That adds up to one, meaning the total has to add up to two a hundred percent. So in other words, if I look at this in terms of percents, odds here are going to be equal to one divided by two or one half, one over two, one divided by two. Let's make that a percent. Home tab, alignment, percentify. Let's add some decimals just to make sure it's 50% without any decimals. Do that here equals one over two. Once again, I'll choose my formatting this way this time. Home tab, clipboard, format painter, brush it. And then this one I can say, well, then two over two. Let's do the format painter here. Home tab, clipboard. There it is, is that. Or I could say, of course, equals 50% plus 50%. Also double checking gets us to that 100%. So that has to be the case. So it has to be the case that the total has got to be equal to 100% if I've accounted for everything, right? So that's going to be our check figure from like an accounting standpoint, right? That's like having the, the balance sheet in balance, you know? So let's go ahead and make this then uh, home tab, font group. Let's put some borders around it. Let's make that uh, blue. Okay, so then, then the next thing we, we have is our expected return. Now you can think of this from a gambling scenario, but you can also think of it basically in an invest an investing situation. You have a similar kind of concept. So we have the expected expected value, or you can call it return on investment in essence. So we're going to say, let's, let's make this black and white home tab font group, making that black and white. And so we're going to say, okay, expected, if I win, then what's the payout going to be? I'm going to get a payout of $1 and the, the odds of me winning are equal to 50%. So I'll make that home tab number percent. And so that means it's going to be equal to one times 50. And let's add some decimals just to make sure it's at, I mean, to get it at 50%. And then we're going to say the odds of a loss on, on each bet is going to be, uh, I'm going to lose a dollar on a loss. 
and the odds are 50%. Let's make that home tab, format painter, boom. So this equals losing a dollar times 50%. Let's add some decimals, number decimal. So that of course gives us an expected value or return of summing those up of zero which makes intuitive sense because we think it's it's if we were a betting game it would be a fair game if it's you against the casino now obviously if it's a if it's an investment then it's not unusual to have a a expected value that is positive that's the point we want to get an expected value that is positive and then basically try to try to get the highest positive expected values that we can to try to figure out what the investments are. Obviously, when we're comparing it to betting against somebody else in a casino situation, for example, we're going to often come out with either even odds to be fair if it was a game, or we're going to come out with less than favorable because we're at a casino situation and they're going to get, you know, the casino is going to get paid, right? So that's going to be the idea. So let's, let's make this uh, home tab, font group, borders, and blue okay so that's going to be the general idea there now let's imagine a change let's say well what if we're going to say it's two to one odds so i'm going to copy this whole thing just so we can see the scenario i could just change the two here but i'm going to copy the whole thing and say okay let's copy from d1 down to this and let's just change the whole thing i'm going to copy this so we can compare it and then paste it right here in D17. So now we have a payout. So now we're gonna imagine coin flips scenario, heads and tails, but if you win, so we're gonna imagine heads is gonna win for us, we're gonna get two dollars. So, and then, and then if we lose, they're gonna pay us one. So we put our dollar on the, on the table in the carnival game. And if we get a heads, they, they put two dollars on top of it and we take it, right? Whereas if it's tails, they take our dollar. Now that would be very unusual if they were to do that in a carnival game. You would expect that the coin is vastly unfair, right? Or something, something funny is going on. But in, in investment, in finance, you might be able to find, you know, uh, you're trying to look for favorable odds is the point, right? But in any case, so then we're going to say, okay, well, if you win, now we're going to say, let's say this, if I win, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to two, uh, well, hold on a sec. The odds are the same. The odds are the same to win. It's going to be one half versus one half because the coin is still fair, but now the payout has changed. So now to win, if I, if I win, I get $2. Let's say this is going to be equal to this $2. So I get $2 and there's a 50% chance of me winning. So that means, so, so, so that comes out to one. If I lose, then, then uh, I lose only a dollar and there's a 50% chance of losing. Therefore, our expected value is 50 cents. Now in future presentations, we'll map this out and say, well, does that make sense? Intuitively, it kind of makes sense, but obviously in one coin flip, you're not gonna be able to, the one coin flip could be anything, right? Uh, you could, but if you were to play it in the long run, you would expect on average, that you would have a 50 cents return. And the more likely for that to be correct would be that you play it for a longer time frame, which is why most casinos are designed to keep you there, right? They don't, they're, they're trying to say, hey, look, we're, we want you to keep playing is the general idea of, uh, of the casino because they can win and they're going to win in the long run because the odds are gonna be favorable to the casino in such a way that it might be somewhat small, but over the long term it'll work, which means that in the short run, anything could happen, right? You could win in the short run. The casino is a long term thing. Whereas investing, of course, the idea is that you should have a favorable return, which might not be huge, but in the long run, it starts to it starts to pay off uh, huge, right? That's the idea. Okay, let's run another one. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this one again. So let's say I copy from, uh, uh, there's that I did down to here. So the odds, uh, 
Let's copy it from here. Line 17, the payout. So I'm going to copy the payout and let's say, okay, let's change the scenario a bit. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it down here in line 33, control V or paste. And so let's bring it back to one, one to one. So the payout's going to be one to one again. You put down a dollar. If it comes out heads, they put a dollar on top of it and you take it. If it comes out tails, they take the dollar that you put down, right? And then, but now let's change the odds. Now, if the coin is not fair, then I can't calculate the odds by just saying it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, one over how many chances, in this case, two chances, head or tails. Or if the dice was unfair, I can't just say, well, it's going to be one out of six because the dice are weighted. So then I, well, then it's the question is, well, how am I going to figure out the odds of heads versus tails. The only way you could do that typically would be to empirically test the coin by flipping it a whole bunch of times and looking at the average heads versus tails outcome if it's not a fair 50-50 coin, right? So let's just imagine that it comes out to like two thirds. And so now it's gonna be two thirds. Well, if it, if it comes out heads two thirds of the time, then it must come out tails uh, one third of the time because the total has to come out to 100%. To figure that out, you'd probably have to flip the coin a bunch of times and you would figure out that two thirds of the times it comes out to heads and one third of the time, then it must be coming out to tails because those are the only two options, right? So if that was the case, we have an uneven coin, then we could say, okay, let's imagine that to win, we're going to get a dollar if it comes out heads, but we're, it's going to be at odds. Let's add some decimals here. Home tab, add some decimals. Uh, odds are favorable to us. We're going to say it comes out heads uh, two thirds of the time, most of the time. So therefore, even though it's even money, we have, we're going to have a, a favor. It's going to be favorable game to us because the coin isn't even, of course, right? So we're gonna, so we come out 67 about cents. And if we lose, we still lose a dollar, but that's only gonna happen 33% of the time. So per flip, we would expect that we're gonna win in this case at 33% of the time. Now, again, if it was a casino game, you would expect you'd lose every time on some fraction of a dollar or something like that, which we'll talk about later, but that's, uh, you know, that's the idea. So there's two things that we have to figure in this on these calculations that one is going to be the fairness of the game and the other is going to be basically the pay. Well, one are going to be the odds of the outcome and the other is going to be the payout. And those two things together, if this comes out to be zero, you would expect it would be a fair game, which is something you're looking for when you're playing a game with like a friend of, or something like that, right? Where the two people, you want something fair. One's gonna win, the other's gonna lose. But if you're in an investment situation, then clearly you want a favorable gain. You're looking to invest in things that are favorable, right? And that's gonna be the idea. And in a casino situation, of course, we would expect that there's gonna be a negative expected value uh, for, the, for the time. So let's, let's, if I copy this again, and we can say, let's have, let's say that, that now we have two, uh, let's say that it was $2, right? So now we're going to say the payout is $2 and the odds are still 60 and, and 33. So now we have both being the case where when we win, we get $2 versus $1 and the coin is favorable to us. And, and we're going to map these scenarios out and say, okay, does that make sense in one flip that we don't know if we can't test that with one flip. We can only test this by doing a whole bunch of flips, which Excel is great at being able to test with and then try to say, is that what the actual data is telling us that on average in this scenario, we would get about 33 cents over the long run, this scenario, a dollar. So we'll test that later. Remember that what we're looking for are favorable versus even or fair versus unfavorable. And you might label these like I'll make this home tab font group. I'll make this green favorable 
even, I'm going to say that's going to be orange. And then unfavorable, I'll say that's going to be red. And let's make the font in these white. So, so, so that that's the outcome here. So remember when I'm talking, if it's favorable, sometimes I, you might mistake it sometimes and, and miss. So if I misspeak sometimes, you know, forgive me here, but uh, obviously if the pay is one to one, you might think that that is the thing that's, that's determining whether it's favorable or not. But remember that the, the favorable is with the odds. You could still have the pay be one to one, but the the odd you have to compare the two things the likelihood of the outcome and the pay to to get the the expected return if the expected return is basically zero then you would ex you expect it to be even or fair now again even or fair is a virtue that's what you're looking for if you're playing you're trying to construct a game to play with your friend and you're saying you know this is just this is just for kicks right we're coming up with a fair game and we're gonna play these rules and, and so on and so forth with a fair game, which is similar to what you have in a casino situation, except of course with a casino situation, they they are the ones that are providing the game. So they're kind of giving you the, the joy of playing the game, of course, right? So they're gonna take a cut out of the profits. How could they do that? Well, you could have some games where there's a pool in place like horse racing where you're basically betting against other people and they just take a p piece of the pot or like in poker or something like that. Or of course, you, they're gonna put in, in the game, if you're betting against the casino itself, they're gonna make it favorable to the casino because of course the casino needs to pay for the casino, right? So if you play things against the house, such as roulette or craps or blackjack or something like that, the game is going to be tilted towards, of course, the casino because that's how they pay for the casino. So they're going to win, you know, so it's unfavorable. That's what you would expect, all right? It makes sense that that's the, going to be the case if you want to, you know. And then, but if you're in a finance situation, meaning you're investing, then, of course, it's not uncommon to have a favorable situation. You want the favorable situations because that's where your money is not only going to make you the most money, but it's actually good for the economy because it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a win lose situation, right? If you invest in investments that are favorable, you're investing in things that are actually growing the pie, and in that and so that's what you're basically trying to do in an investment scenario. So so it's useful to to look at this outcome, the expected return, and then think of where am I at and what expected return would I expect. And what expected term return would I accept in a given in a given scenario? I'm okay playing at a casino with with unfair with unfavorable odds, right? As, because that's the jo that as long as then, then the question is how unfavorable is it? Because obviously you're just playing there in order to just play just to play you know a game, right? You're not I'm not looking to win necessarily in the long run at a casino it's not the place to do that i'm just hanging out and basically betting because that's what you do there i get right and then the, the environment then whatever but if i'm in an investment situation then of course i need the favorable situation i'm looking to, to grow money over time and if i'm if i'm betting with a friend and we're just playing some kind of game then obviously we want the favor the, the even fair situation otherwise you're cheating your friend when you're just trying to play like a game, which may not be the point of the process in that case. All right, so let's stop it here and we'll continue on uh, next time and, and we'll run some scenarios in Excel and test out, uh, test out kind of empirically with Excel these outcomes.